Hey, everybody, we made it through another week. Excited to be here with you on this Friday. If you're tuning in in the same day, thanks so much for the same day support. Truly appreciate you. Uh, Excited to get into the Friday review because this is my chance to catch back up with you. So I go over everything that's going on in my own life. I share things going on in the private practice, let you know what's going on over at Equal Life. Uh, See if you missed anything on the podcast over the past five days or so. I go over a product review or a book review. This will will be a brand uh, new product, maybe brand new product to you uh, that can literally save you $1,000, maybe $2,000 on one of those fancy indoor bikes. Uh, We'll go over the herb of the week this week. This is an herb of the week that especially men are going to want to be aware of. So definitely wait for that one. Check that one out. And then uh, two research studies that, again, anything that really jogs my mind and really reinforces things maybe I've heard before. Maybe it's something brand new. I like to share that with you as well. So uh, this week on a very important vitamin that most people are deficient on uh, that increases all-cause mortality by 25 technically 26% to 88%. I mean, that's an enormous number for just one vitamin. All right, so we're going to check that out, and we're also going to check out um, an issue of one particular pharmaceutical drug being prescribed way too often uh, to children, and it is causing them their health uh, and often, uh, well, a lot of cost to the healthcare system, which is was the basis of this article. I tend to look at it a little bit differently. All right, so let's dive in. What is going on over uh, in the private practice? Well, the private practice, I'm not going to go over too much of it here today, but a uh, brand new month inside of Ayubowen. So hopefully you've already been checking out all the new workouts inside of there. Uh, we've got new cycling workouts, new cardio workouts, new bodyweight workouts, new Tabata workout, new Metcon workout. Uh, what else? We've got a new meditation in there, Yoga Nidra. That's a really fun one. That was a big uh, requested one from the podcast I did just a bit back. So new recipes, new smoothies. You're going to want to check it out for sure. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash app to check it out. And if you don't know what Ayubon is, and that's the way that you get this app completely free, definitely check that out as well. stephencabral.com forward slash Ayubon, A-Y-U-B-O-W-A-N. So definitely, definitely check that out. All right. So what's going on? Well, tomorrow I'm excited because tomorrow... Tomorrow, I leave to head to Maine. Maine is one of my favorite places in the entire world. I kind of have to maybe have grown up there or just really appreciate quiet, appreciate the, like literally the beauty of nature. And I've, I've lived through some Maine winters. And if you've ever lived through a Maine winter then, and you enjoy it, then you're, you're definitely, uh, I think that you can consider yourself a Mainer then. So I've been going to Maine for my entire life. Um, probably spending at least a couple months there every single year. And then uh, over the pandemic, we'll say I spent all my time up there. So we moved up there. And um, now, again, we we go back and we go back quite often, but we're going to spend the entire summer up there. So super excited. I have uh, what I call my main bunker up there. It's inside of an old mill. It's just me and a recording setup. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, spot and just a, uh, well, a town that basically time forgot. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I love it. Uh, Truly do. It's a time for me to be able to really get outside more. That That's a big part of it. Breathe in that fresh air. I have my outdoor sauna up there. The Maine water, if anyone's ever been to Maine, the ocean is so incredibly cold, even during the summer. It warms up for like a week during later August uh, after the warm sun has been kind of beating down for some time. But it's fantastic because it acts as a cold plunge as well. And of course, uh, kids somehow don't feel cold. So they certainly go in the water and they enjoy themselves as well. And that's a big part of it is being able to catch back up with family as well well, uh, extended family and friends. And, and that's why it's so much fun. So we can't wait. We're heading down or heading back up uh, tomorrow and uh, couldn't be more excited. So I'll certainly be sending uh, some more Instagram updates on uh, on a near daily basis of all the main based adventures, all the hikes I do with my daughters and all the runs up there through the woods and all sorts of fun stuff. All right. Next up is, well, it is, believe it or not, that time again. It is every 12 weeks time for our seasonal based detox. And again, not ours in general, but in Ayurveda and in detoxification based principles, every season is time to give the body a break, a time for a whole body reset. And now more than 
However, in this world, we need to be continuing to empty our rain barrel, removing toxins, removing a lot of stress from our life, heavy metals, etc. So uh, ours is beginning June 20th. We had a lot of internal debate because, again, we are always taking you into account what we, you uh, what we feel you will believe the best date to start the summer detox. So we're thinking, okay, 4th of July in the U.S., that's a big holiday weekend. That's kind of like the unofficial start to summer. So when are people going to start celebrating 4th of July? I don't know, maybe Thursday? So Thursday is going to be June 30th. So how do we get a weekend right before 4th of July weekend in order to do our detox? So we're thinking maybe we'll start Wednesday and we'll go from the June 22nd to June 29th, but we've never started on a Wednesday before and a lot of people like starting fresh on that Monday. So that's what we started to do or decided to do. So we couldn't do June 27th because it'd run all the way into July 4th. So June 20th, to June 26th is going to be our summer detox. You are welcome to start your summer, summer detox whenever you'd like, but uh, I'll be doing mine for sure. I'll be doing mine June 20th. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that because that is just such a great way to just feel your best, look your best, have energy, all those great things for summer. So I'm excited for it. I really am. Um, this one is definitely one that I've already have marked down on the calendar and have for some time, just kind of playing with those dates. So June 20th, join us, free support every single day inside of the Facebook group at cabralsupportgroup.com. And if you'd like to get a free detox, which is an amazing offer, it's a $99 value, uh, simply buy three with uh, friends, with family, start your own group. The best thing to do, literally the best thing to do is do this with other people. It's so great. It really has built a lot of camaraderie. Uh, and if you're thinking about doing a 21 day, well, you can do your 21 day, which is three seven day detoxes, and you'll get one free for later this year. All right. So that is at stephencabral.com forward slash shop while supplies last. All right. Podcast recap for the week, the five habits to fix all of your problems. I was going with a big, bold statement for our Monday podcast this week. And, um, to me, it's the essence. That's why it's the essence of how we fix the majority of the problems in our life. So definitely check out that show. Uh, all these shows are at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And today is episode 2317. We'll I'll certainly have all of the show notes there. Uh, on Tuesday, a little controversial show. Uh, I'm typically not the most controversial person. I like to bring people together rather than create division. But I did want to give people a, the true, the truth, right? The true history of Big Pharma and how it took over conventional medicine and why essentially conventional medicine, uh, unless we're talking about emergency-based medicine um, or surgical-based uh needs is a pill for every ill, right? So you come in with X and you get Y, right? That's how it is. It wasn't always that way though. It was, wasn't even that way about a hundred years ago. So definitely check out that show for the, uh, it's again, it was, it was very calculated. It was fairly straightforward. And before anybody knew it, they had taken over and there was no going back. So check that out. I can get you these numbers if you'd like. Uh, Mondays was 2313. How Big Pharma took over medicine was 2314. 2315 was, is skipping breakfast hurting your metabolism? Please check out this show. If you're currently skipping breakfast, if your spouse is skipping breakfast, if anyone you know is skipping breakfast, you just listen to the show. It doesn't mean you have to stop skipping breakfast. Just check out the show. That's all that I ask. All right. And uh, 2316 was PCOS hormones and exercise-based recommendations. All right. All those are at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. This is our product review of the week. Let's check it out. I'm going into the iBowen app right now, and I'm going to click on, if you're watching this on video, you can kind of follow along. I'm going to click on workouts. So we have inside of the iBowen uh, app, walking workouts, cardio workouts, abs and core, body weight training, dumbbell training, sprints, foam rolling, stretching. There's so much in here. Again, absolutely free. There's dozens of different workouts to be able to do and more being added every month. So let's say we go over to our cardio and we're going to click on uh, interval cycling cardio workout. So right there inside the beautiful app right there, we just click on interval cycling workout. And this one is 20 minutes and 54 seconds. It gives you the level. This is based for an intermediate based person. Then it tells you all about what the workout's about. I'm going to play it right now. 
All right, so I just fast forward about four minutes in, and you'll see as I turn this on its side. There we go. You are actually able to just follow along with this cycling based app, moving at the pace that they're recommending, adding the tension that you feel is appropriate for you and be able to go through the sprints as well as the different cool downs and follow along with a professionally shot video. So pretty impressive uh, in my opinion. I think it's amazing. And the thing is I have some curated exercise bike selections for you that will save you a thousand to two thousand dollars off of something like a Peloton or one of the fancier base bikes. Now I have no problem with you purchasing one of those bikes. I don't at all. I think they're pretty great. I really do. But if you're looking to save the money and you don't need one of those bikes to kind of get you motivated, at stephencabral.com forward slash resources, I've selected three bikes that we've used inside of my functional medicine integrative uh, health wellness centers uh, and the personal training studio that I used to have as well. So literally, and, and the personal training studio still exists, <laughs> a former um, manager is, is running that studio and doing an amazing job. And if you want to check that out, you can go to MWA Fitness in Boston and you can um, check out that amazing studio. But let me share this with you, that you could literally open up this app, you could do a follow along cardio based workout on that bike. The bike might cost you anywhere from a couple hundred dollars uh, to maybe like $500 if you want to get one of the more expensive ones. And you have essentially the same exact thing. You can just put this phone or on an iPad. I think it plays on an iPad. I'm not sure about that, but at least on your phone, you'll be able to play that right along and follow along with it. So I just, it's a, it's a fun way, a different way of thinking about how might I still be able to get in workouts and also at the same time save a lot of money. So why I wanted to bring this to you is that a lot of people think that they need to buy a $2,000 indoor bike in order to get all those benefits. The bike that I've recommended is a spin-based bike right at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. And I'll try to link it up today as well. Since it's not a supplement, uh, the FDA and the powers that be will allow me to link that up. So I'm going to link up the three different types at 2317 today, stephencabral.com forward slash 2317. And I have a Schwinn Airdyne bike. I have a Rogue Airdyne bike, which is like super, like if you're someone, well, let's say if you're over 200 pounds and you're pretty strong and you're going to crank on that thing, that's the one to get. So you don't break the Schwinn. The Schwinn Airdyne bike will break. Uh, we've broken it. I've broken it. <laughs> so if you want one, that's not going to break. Uh, like if you're, if you like to really get after it and you're going to be doing a lot of sprinting on the bike, okay, then the Rogue is great. Um, and then for everyday cycling, like everyday biking, then the other bike that I've mentioned, which is basically not like a brand name bike, but it works great. You can adjust the seat forward and back, up and down, handlebars forward and back, uh, up and down as well. So it's, it is a premium base bike for literally just a couple hundred dollars. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, I personally use them myself, which is why I feel good recommending them to you. And in my main bunker that I just talked about, I have that, uh, Air, I have that Airdyne bike as well, which is the, the Rogue one. All right, let's get into our herb of the week. So our herb of the week is none other than, and again, I'm trying to give you herbs. So every single Friday, I'm bringing you uh, an herb of the week. And so you can check out again at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast every Friday in 2022. So you might be listening to this in 2030, but in 2022, uh, I brought you an herb of the week every single Friday. There was like one Friday I missed. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to bring some maybe more obscure herbs to your attention so that you understand the healing power of nature. And today's is Pygeum. So Pygeum is something I've been using in my practice now for about 12 years. I originally used it for men with uh, prostate imbalances, and that is because it's one of its number one uses is actually for prostate inflammation, prostate-based imbalances. But the uh, herb Pygeum actually comes from the bark of the tree. It actually comes from what's called an African cherry tree. So you'll see it go by a few different names, but almost always uh, it's either as African plum tree, African cherry tree, uh, or just Pygeum bark is typically what you see it as. So uh, we are big advocates of it because of the research. Again, there's scientific research behind all of these different herbs that I bring you every single week. So please, uh, I was just reading a magazine the other day. I'm going to be talking about this probably on the next Friday review, not this week, uh, but next. Like this just 
absolute madness. Like one of the world's, world's largest uh, magazine publications in the world. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to save it for next week, all right? It was just, it was absolute madness that a medical doctor would just come out and say, he was talking about a specific condition and there was nothing that actually helps for it uh, in terms of natural health. And it was just so ridiculous, so ridiculous, but I'll talk more about it next week so I don't get thrown off uh, today's Pygium-based scientific research. So, Pygium is being used for all things prostate, all right? It's being used for prostate inflammation, may help with prostate cancer. I can't say that it can. I'm just saying it's being studied right now, may help with prostate cancer, because what it does is help with prostate cell overgrowth or growth. Um, it's helping with kidney-based issues, so any urinary tract-based issues, anything to do um, not just with men, but we mainly use this just with the men, uh, with male uh, fertility and that's because it's also been shown to help with testosterone as well. So how does Pygium work? Well, Pygium bark has some natural anti-inflammatory based properties. So that's going to help what shrink, like shrink whatever is inflamed. That's a big part of it. Uh, but it also may have some antiviral based properties that we don't quite know all that much about because it may, it's been shown again to help with fever, malaria, and other issues as well, even stomach aches. Uh, I've also seen one of the big reasons as to why it works. It's a natural testosterone to dihydrotestosterone blocker. That means the Testosterone that might aggravate hair loss or aggravate the prostate, uh, which is testosterone to DHT, right? The dihydrotestosterone, it helps to block that. So pretty potent, uh, pretty powerful, and again, a really great herb that you may want to look into. Another reason why I like it is that it seems to normalize testosterone, meaning that even though it seems to block or does block testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, it doesn't lower natural testosterone production. So uh, great, great herb to, to think about using, to talk about. Uh, we use it in two ways in a product called Advanced Prostate Support. It's one of our stars. And we also use it, of course, in the daily hair support. And the reason is that it, what? It blocks testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, the number one reason why men lose their hair. So um, that is how we use it. But again, you can use it on its own. Uh, you can talk with your naturopathic doctor about it. You can talk with your uh, integrative health uh, practitioner about it as well. So I can't link it up. Unfortunately, I can't link up any herbs uh, or supplements on the podcast pages any longer. Uh, and that is because uh, it is no longer legal. All right. So there we have it. But you know where to look, right? For all of the different products that I've mentioned. All right. Um, let's move on now to our two research studies of the week. So the first one was this, and I'm going to link up four separate studies, one from PubMed, another from JAMA, another from Oregon State. And let's see where this last study is from. This one is out of... Universe, Washington University School of Medicine. Oh, that's actually the next one. Washington Indu University uh, School of Medicine will be our last one for the day. All right, so here's what we're looking at right now. And, and this is just a big headline. I mean, really a big headline. 26% to 88% increased risk for all-cause mortality for those with deficiencies in vitamin D. That means anybody that has low vitamin D has a 26% to 88% greater chance of dying for any reason. I mean, it's an unbelievable statistic. And again, these aren't published on natural health-based sites or anything like that. Literally, you'll find them on WebMD. You'll find them on PubMed. You'll find it in JAMA. Um, so this is these are big deal. This, this is really a big deal, even for um, conventional medicine to say this. So it's undeniable that the human body needs vitamin D. We need to be able to get that on at least a three to four day a, a week basis from the sun because the body can store some vitamin D. And the way that we do that though is by getting a tan. And why I bring this up again is that we're moving in the summertime, but many people don't get a tan because they put on you know, a lot of sunscreen. And they put on sunscreen because they may not want aging skin or they're worried about skin cancer or whatever it might be. I understand. I'm not going to have that, you know, conversation necessarily today. Um, but what I will say is this. If you're not getting sun, even in the summertime, I mean, the only way to get vitamin D is to actually get a tan, right? That's that's the way that vitamin D works. 
If you're out in the sun, but you have sunscreen on, you don't get vitamin D. That's uh, literally, I'll go through the process of how vitamin D works one day in the body, but it has to hit the skin. So the skin has to start to get a tan. Now, I'm not recommending a sunburn. That's not good, but you get a tan. How much vitamin D do you need? Well, it often depends on the pigment of the skin. If you have very light, light skin or melanin of the skin, if you have very light skin, you don't need a whole lot of sun. If you have darker skin, you need a lot more sun. Like that's, it's, it's different for each person. So even for like dermatologists say, you only need 15 minutes of sun a day. It's just an arbitrary, ridiculous statement, right? So a buddy of mine who has a very, very fair skin, um, he or she only needs what? Well, they might need 10, 15 minutes. That's it. Another friend of mine who has darker skin, they might need four or five hours. And this is on a near daily basis. This is why so many people have low vitamin D. So if you're not going to get a tan and you, you're not going to be able to get it from the sun, really the only adequate way to get it is from nutritional supplementation. That's it. And you want a good quality vitamin D3 product and you want to take it with something like the daily nutritional support because the daily nutritional support provides the magnesium, the vitamin K2 and the other cofactors in order to be able to absorb it properly. And it's, it's again, it's not difficult, but it's just so important that people understand this. The last stat I wanted to give you is that we're two years now removed from I want to, no, we're not, I shouldn't say that. We're not two years removed from the pandemic, but the pandemic's been around now for two years. And so we do know lots of studies now on who is most at risk. Well, those people with low vitamin D had a 14x, 14 times greater risk of dying from COVID. That's an unbelievable statistic as well. So I just wanted to share that with you, that this is no joke, that this should be talked about by both conventional medicine and natural health practitioners. And we need to get it out to people. Test your vitamin D levels twice a year, right? Test them if you want in the summer. I guarantee you're probably still going to be low unless you're getting a tan. Uh, but certainly test it early fall and then test it midwinter. So like test it in September uh, or oct early October as you're moving into winter or colder months. Again, in Australia, you can just kind of flip it or our, our friends uh, <laughs> overseas as well. And then you want to test it in like February or March, like just test it just to make sure. Or if you know you're never getting sun, then just test it any month because your vitamin D is probably going to always be the same. Then just supplement to the amount that gets you to between 50 and 70, which is the sweet spot. All right. So I can link up a vitamin D test today. I'll do that. You can do it right at home if you want. Uh, I can't link up vitamin D3, but again, you know where to find all these products at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. Uh, but again, you can get your vitamin D3 from whoever you'd like. I just want to be able to share with you that there's very few things that you can do that cost you a dollar a day that are very simple to do that you could decrease your chance for all cause mortality by 26 to 88 percent just by optimizing vitamin D. And uh, you'll have a 14 times less greater chance of dying from COVID by at least optimizing your vitamin D, right? Just do the opposite of what these show. All right, last study for the day is, and this is important, inappropriate antibiotics for non-hospitalized kids cost the U.S. at least $74 million. So I read that headline. I was like, all right, I'll bite. You know, I'll read it. So this was this literally just came out yesterday. Uh, it's out of the Washington University School of Medicine. And, um, and it said non-hospitalized kids. So I'm like, all right, well, these are kids that are just going to their typical doctor's office. Let me read you a couple excerpts. Children who are prescribed unneeded or unsuitable antibiotics in outpatient settings, such as doctor's offices and urgent care centers, also were up to eight times more likely to develop complications such as diarrhea, skin rashes, uh, than other children who were treated according to standard medical guidelines. A previous study suggests that about 29% of antibi pres antibiotic prescriptions for non-hospitalized children nationwide are inappropriate. So about a third of all the times that your child gets antibiotics is inappropriate. It's unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. On a population level, antibiotic use drives the de development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Such bacteria can cause difficult-to-treat infections that lead to 35,000 deaths in the U.S. each year. But less is known about the individual health risks and economic costs associated with inappropriate antibiotic use. And by the way, this was published in the largest medical journal in the world, JAMA. I'm going to link it up for you. But here's the thing. Kids end up with allergies, like I did, asthma, I had borderline asthma, like I did. Uh, you can get diarrhea, travels diarrhea, not travels diarrhea, but C. diff-related diarrhea, skin rashes, eczema, psoriasis, 
And think about all the autoimmune issues tied to intestinal permeability, leaky gut. I mean, this is a absolute disaster. So 29%, let's round up just again. Well, we don't have to round up. Basically, 29%, almost a third of all antibiotic recommendations are bogus. Why are they bogus? They're being rec they're recommended for viral-based issues. Antibiotics are only used for bacterial-based issues, okay? And in my opinion, should only be used in life saving based conditions. Why? Because they cause all sorts of other health-based issues. I've talked about that on previous shows. You can certainly check them out, but I'm not telling you not to use antibiotics with your children. What I am saying is ask questions. It's okay to ask your doctor things like, hey, is this a virus or is it a bacterial infection? And if they don't know, why are they prescribing antibiotics, right? It's just at least maybe just start there. So that's my humble opinion. And uh, I just want to make sure that our kids... They, they have a better chance as adults for being healthy than a lot of people in my generation that simply went to the doctors, got that z pack, and you were on your way. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. Of course, if it was, please do feel free to share any of this podcast with anyone you believe it could serve. 